Hello, hello! Welcome back to Loki's Library, and if you are new here, welcome! I am your librarian, Katrina. This is where I am reading the enormous library of books that is not currently behind me because I am still TDY for my day job, but after I read the book, I give you a quick synopsis and tell you what I think about them. So if you like books, just aren't sure what to read next, hit that subscribe button, like and share my videos, and let me know what you think in the comments. This week's book of the week is a new release, but it does not violate my book buying moratorium since I pre-ordered it back in July of 2022. It is In Defense of the Second Amendment by Larry Correa. There we go. Tilted so you guys can see it. Before it is by actor Nick Searcy. I tried really hard to find a cocktail called Second Amendment, and while I found an ingredient list for a restaurant that used to have a cocktail by that name, there was no actual recipe since I am not a mixologist. I instead went with my Second Amendment glass, which the light's reflecting off of, but it has the Second Amendment etched into it. And uh, the accompanying cocktail is called Lady Liberty, which is three ounces of bourbon, one cap of sweet vermouth, two maraschino cherries, a splash of cherry syrup, and three splashes of Sprite. So let's do this. Now, as many of you recall from my October fiction book, Larry Correa is one of my favorite fiction authors. Now, don't let that dissuade you though. This is unquestionably a work of nonfiction, which is why I'm reviewing it now and not in like April when I will do my next fiction book. Um, see, before becoming a best-selling fiction author, Korea was, I still is, I guess, a gun guy. He owned a firearm store, taught CCW classes, testified before the Utah State Legislature on the ramifications of the various proposed gun control measures and what those ramifications might be. So it's not like he's talking out of his ass here. He does know of what he speaks when he, when he wrote this book. In fact, the book, I feel like, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Even after becoming a best-selling author, Larry Correa spent a not insignificant chunk of time over the last decade arguing with idiots on the Twitter sphere and farce book, writing several blog posts that have gone viral on gun rights and the benefits of a well-armed populace. So he's not, He's not talking out his ass. He does know of what he speaks. It's not just paying lip service like the Moms Demand Action idiots who think that, you know, if you just ban everything, life will be peachy keen. We're going to get to that. Actually, he gets to that a lot in depth. It's wonderful. I'm pretty sure on his podcast he's doing with, with uh, Steve Diamond, it's a podcast called Writer's Dojo. He mentioned writing this book was more like pulling his best of blog posts and just checking for updated statistics. So he actually turned this one out in less time than he turns out most of his fiction books. And he's a prolific fiction writer. It's not like he's, he's not like George R.R. R. Martin where he, you know, is resting on his laurels and not writing that last book. He, he's pretty, yeah, he writes a lot. I love him. Now, what was in this book is, is a healthy dose of Korea sarcasm, which made this wickedly funny to read. I, I just, I laughed, laughed out loud multiple times. A cap full is, I'm just gonna take that at literal face value and do a cap full of sweet vermouth and hope that I can get this bottle open at a later date. I mean, all right, it's funny to read unless you're like a left wing nut who believes everything that Moms Demand Action puts out there, but it, it's glorious to read. It was just, I loved it, loved it. A splash of the cherry syrup. Splashes, I actually looked it up. I'm like, that actually is a technical measurement. It comes out to like an eighth of an ounce, which is like three quarters of a teaspoon. So I'm using a teaspoon to measure this shit out. Now he does try to keep this nonpartisan because as Korea points out, self-defense is a basic human right. It applies equally across the entire political spectrum. Uh, but he does go after mom, mom's demand actions with just a brutal vengeance, probably because they are the most obnoxious and they go after him with equal verb. So he's just better at it than they are. He starts by, let me stir this up here. It, it probably should be shaken because of the, the cherry syrup, but it didn't say to shake it, so I'm just gonna stir it up. Now, he starts by identifying the anti-gun crowd as vultures and why he calls them that. I mean, which is an accurate title, all right? Vultures being scavengers, they glory and dance in the blood of the dead, which is exactly what the anti-gun crowd does. They love mass shootings because it helps them push their narrative. Uh, he outlines in detail a phenomenon anyone who is a center to right of center on gun rights is grossly familiar with. Um, wild speculation on the motives of the murderer until the shooter is known to fit, to not fit the message. 
Uh, I'm not using the critical drinkers message because this message is the one being that only white cis hetero men who vote Republican are mass shooters. Once the shooter is shown to be of the left's political persuasion, the story vanishes from the media. I mean, like clockwork. It's so blatantly partisan. The husband and I don't even have to follow the news to know if a shooter fits the message. We can tell by how quickly the stories vanish from our social media if the shooter was, in fact, a left-wing nut. Because if he votes left to center, it's gone like that. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's like it never even happened. The media wants to pretend like it didn't even exist. But Korea goes a bit further, actually breaking down just how biased the news is, giving us statistics that demonstrate how lopsided the reporting is. And even better, he cites his sources on that. So it's not just me thinking, oh, that's crazy. It, 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 you know, maybe, maybe it's just the fate, you know, farce book algorithms that are sh having this vanish that quickly. No, he actually cites the sources that says, no, it's not in your head. They are in fact that disgustingly biased. It's good to know that those of us who aren't on the crazy train know that we're definitely not on that train. I mean, it is as biased as we think it is. It's, it's actually worse than we think it is. He covers in detail why all the do-somethings accomplish absolutely nothing. He covers all the usual suspects, the ban, automatic weapons, which automatic weapons already are banned. They've been banned since 1934, all right? I mean, we haven't had any new legal automatic weapons manufactured in this country since I think 1986, he said. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not that hard to convert a semi-automatic to a full automatic. I don't know how to do it myself, but it's not, an, it's not a hard thing to do, and so there are many illegal ones out there. This is going to be a running theme here, mainly that criminals don't care about the law. It's crazy. It's crazy. I've actually tried that argument in people, and it's like they seem to think that people are just going to suddenly obey. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. I don't get that mindset. But uh, ban X type of gun, insert whatever X may be. You don't need an assault rifle for hunting. Why do civilians need weapons of war? Hello, Ukraine. Why would Ukraine need weapons of war? Uh, banning certain types of ammunition, banning X type of gun adjustment. X can be certain magazine stocks, grips, red flag laws. He addresses all of this and more, including why whatever the do somethings want is generally a terrible idea and why it's going to end badly for everybody. He also follows to his logical, horrifying conclusion the bizarre idea that cops are super eager to engage in gun confiscation. They, uh, they are not and why it's unlikely to ever happen. I mean, not impossible, right? All things are possible, and he acknowledges that, especially if your government is tyrannical enough, all things are possible. But in America, that pesky Second Amendment mitigates the tyranny, or rather it gives we the people the ability to mitigate the tyranny. We need to try this at some point. That's okay. That's okay. I, it, it's a little, a little too bourbon -y for me, I don't know. I'd probably cut down the alcohol, maybe do shot and a half maybe I don't know it's okay it's drinkable um, it was interesting to watch him break it down because if you recall my rather annoyed discussion of how civil wars start last year I'll put that up here uh, I discussed why the good old boys might want to be careful in wishing for war but I was also unsure of how many of our former military might push back uh, Korea has no such hesitation in saying that our former and possibly even active military might come down on the side of we the people and not on the side of the political elite. And, and he outlines his reasons why he believes that in the book. He doesn't say it, uh, but if you think about the oath they take, it promises to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. When we think about it, if enough of the Praetorian Guard determines the biggest enemy is domestic, sitting in D.C., things are going to get real spicy real quick. Uh, Korea also includes some measures that we can do that would help stop mass shootings, including things like arming teachers and how to fight back against gun control laws that do nothing but disarm the citizens. Yeah. And the running theme throughout the book, okay, one of the running themes throughout the book is that criminals don't obey laws. I mean, anyone with two brain cells to rub together knows that this is true, right? Criminals don't obey laws, that's why they're criminals which is why anyone with two brain cells rubbed together knows that gun control laws do nothing to stop crime because criminals don't care. All gun control laws do is disarm law-abiding citizens and make guns that are legal less safe. All right, barrel shrouds come to mind. It makes us, you can, you know, steady the rifle, are or were illegal. 
Another running theme includes the capriciousness of the ATF and the idiocy of the do-something politicians who never know what they're talking about. Uh, the book actually opens with di this disclaimer, direct quote, quote, book publishing takes time and since this went to press, the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has likely changed its regulations because, well, as an organization, it is malicious, capricious, malignantly dysfunctional, and generally sucks. Make sure you check the current rules. That is solid advice. No matter what you're buying, what you're doing, make sure you are obeying the current laws. Uh, he mostly is nonpartisan, though. It, I mean, he does spend the last chapter kind of shredding the spineless politicians who sell out we the people for perceived political clout. Yeah. And telling us what we can do to help win the culture war that has been trying to disarm us and leave us helpless in the face of government tyranny. He reinforces repeatedly how self-defense is a nonpartisan issue and how despite what the left wing nuts want everyone to think gun culture is a big pile of centrist love but yes we have the asshole uncles that people avoided the family reunion uh, but most of us are more than happy to invite everyone to the party because an armed society is a polite society I'm joking sort of not really uh, typically when you get gun people together all other cultural burials kind of fade away as the conversation turns to who prefers to shoot what Literally, I've seen this happen again and again and again. Bring a bunch of gun people together and all they want to talk about is what they like to shoot. Have you ever fired this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this kind of ammo? What about this type of modification? Is that type of modification legal under the current laws? Doesn't matter what race, creed, religion, if they fall under the LGBTQ umbrella, doesn't matter. All right. They just want to talk about their shared passion, which is guns. Um, this book was great. I love this book. When I remove the tags, I'm going to leave some like specific ones in place for quick reference. Next time I find myself embroiled in a social media shit show with a do something numbskull, I'll have a quick reference to pull out of my pocket and kind of help me put on a good show for the spectators in the room. Because as Korea says, direct quote, you can have a rational discussion with people who are engaging in good faith, but if you are engaging the willfully ignorant, just remember that debate is a spectator sport. You don't do it expecting to sway your opponent. They exist simply for you to make your case to the audience. If there's no audience, don't waste your time. So if some idiot, you know, direct messages you, don't bother. But if other people are watching, go ahead, go for broke. Read this book so that you have the easy information available and can follow his logic and, and train of thought. So this one's pretty short. The book itself was less than 200 pages. And obviously I want you to read it, go out and buy it and read it. So I don't want to, you know, give you all the specific details. But uh, yeah. It's a good resource to have. It's a good resource to put in your pocket and to, to be able to pull out and reference if you're, you know, engaging with stupid people. Try not to, I don't know. I don't know. I admire the hell out of him for the way he goes out after people on, on the Twitter sphere, but I just don't have that kind of energy. I have too much other things to do in my life. Maybe if I were a, you know, built multi best selling author and had the type of time that he does, I could do it. Most of us realize that Twitter is not real life. Anyways. That's it for this week. If you like what you saw, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys next Sunday.